Section 8.3 is confidence intervals for population proportions. Remember, the population proportion is p, the sample statistic is p hat. The way we calculate p hat is we look at the number of successes divided by the number of trials. On your TI graphing calculator, we're going to look for a 1 prop z interval. The music organization Little Kids Rock surveyed 517 music teachers and 403 of them said that the video games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, in which 442 players try to play music in time with a video image, have a positive effect on music education. Assuming these teachers to be a random sample of U.S. music teachers, we would like to construct a confidence interval for the proportion of music teachers who believe that music video games have a positive effect on music classrooms. The notation that we use, P is the population proportion. X is the number of individuals in the sample who are in the specified category. It's what we call our successes, the number of successes. N is our sample size, and P hat would be the sample proportion. It would be the number of successes divided by the number of people that you survey. The formula for the confidence interval is going to be our point estimate plus or minus our margin of error. Our point estimate is P hat instead of X bar. The margin of error is still your critical value times the standard error that we used in the central limit theorem for proportions, the square root of PQ over N. The assumptions that we have to make is that we have a simple random sample. The population has to be at least 20 times as large as the sample. Our sample is no more than 5% of the population. The items in the population are divided into two categories, success and failure, and then the sample has to have at least 10 individuals in each category. So n times p hat and n times q hat have to be greater than or equal to 10. What we look for on our calculator is the thing right here, one proportion z intervals. How we get to this point is by hitting stat and then going over to test and then down to one prop z interval. The numbers that you're going to be asked for on your input screen are x, n, and the confidence level. x is your number of successes, n is your sample size, and your confidence level, you'll have to be told what it is. For this problem, we're told that in a survey of 517 music teachers, so n is equal to 517, 403 said that video games, Guitar Hero, and Rock Band have a positive effect on music education. So x would be 403. That's what we're calling our successes. Here we're told to construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of music teachers who believe that these video games have a positive effect. So we want a 95% confidence interval. Let's go to our calculators. We hit stat, go over to test, scroll down till you see one prop z interval, and on my calculator it's letter A. Select that. X is your number of successes. For this problem that was 403. N is the number of people that you survey. That was 517. Our confidence level is 95%. So we leave that alone, go down to calculate and hit enter, and we get this for our output screen. Now the population parameter that we're estimating is P, the population proportion. And that's going to be 0 0.7442.815. What we would say here is that we are 95% sure that between 74.4% and 81.5% of music teachers think music video games are good. The next objective is to find the sample size necessary to obtain a confidence interval of a given width. We go through the same process that we did for the means. We take our margin of error formula, which remember that's going to be your critical value, times your standard error from the central limit theorem, and we take this equation and we solve it for n. When we do that, we end up with this equation right here. Add this to your notes so that you don't have to do the algebra to figure this out every time. Our sample size is equal to, I'm going to write p hat q hat, remember q is just 1 minus p, times our critical value divided by the margin of error squared. If you know a value for p hat and q hat, you do this. If you don't know a value for p hat and q hat, we use the worst case scenario and that is 50-50. We let p be 0.5 and we let q be 0.5. If you don't know anything about the population in advance, that's what we do right here at step two. 
So in the first example, we're going to assume we know something about p hat. In the next example, we'll assume that we don't, and we see how that affects things. So in a survey of 517 music teachers, 403 said that video games have a positive effect on music education. Estimate the sample size needed so that a 95% confidence interval will have a margin of error of 0.03. Using the formula that we have written down here, I'm just going to drop in numbers. P hat is going to be 403 divided by 517. How do I get Q hat? What will Q hat be? It's 1 minus that, or I could say this is the number of successes out of 517. If I have 403 successes, I have 114 failures. Subtract that 403 from 517. And then my critical value for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96. My margin of error, we were told, is 0 0.03, and I square that. Now I go to my calculator. Putting this in my calculator, I get 403 divided by 517 times 114 divided by 517 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.03 close the parentheses and then square that, I end up with 733.666. What will I say my sample size is? In example two, everything is the same except that now I don't have a known value of p hat. So here I've already done the research and I want to know what my sample size should be the next time I do it. Here I don't know anything. So there I'm going to use the formula n equals 0.5 times 0.5 because I'm using 0.5 for p hat and 0.5 for q hat and the rest of it stays the same. z sub alpha over 2 divided by your margin of error squared. So that's going to give me 0.25 because 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.03 squared. Now let's see what that does to our sample size. 0.25 times 1.96 divided by 0 0.03, close the parentheses and square. And what do I get for my sample size? You have to round up to the next whole number. On. Yes, even if it's 0 0.01, you have to round up. When you're finding a sample size, and that was in the notes earlier in 8.1, anytime you're finding a sample size, you have to round up to the next whole number. So even though this was 0.1111, we rounded it up to 1,068. Notice the difference. I have to survey more than 300 more people or 300 more teachers in order to get the margin of error that I want if I don't know something about the population proportion. If I don't have these numbers, if I know nothing in advance, I've got to survey a whole bunch of more people. That's what not knowing something about the population does to your sample sizes. It greatly increases the number of people that you have to survey. Objective 3 tells us what we can do if we have a small proportion. What do we do if n times p hat and n times q hat are not equal to 10? For confidence intervals, we can still work the problems. We just have to use an adjusted sample proportion, and that proportion is called p tilde. It's a p with a tilde on it. The way we get it is we add 2 to our successes, and we add 4 to our sample size. So when using a small sample method, the standard error and the critical values are calculated in the same way, but instead of using the p hat, we use the p tilde. It's really pretty simple to do. We simply input x plus 2 in place of x and n plus 4 in place of n. So in a random sample of 10 businesses in a certain city, six of them had more than 15 employees. Here our sample size is 10 and our number of successes is 6. What we're going to use is n equals 10 plus 4, which is 14, and x equals 6 plus 2, which is 8, and then everything else remains the same. So here we're asked to construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of businesses in the city that have more than 15 employees. We go to our calculator. We go to the one prop z interval. So we hit stat, test, go down to letter a, one prop z interval. For x, we're going to use 8. For n, we're going to use 14. And our confidence level, we were told, is 95%. And this gives us the output. And what we would put in for our confidence interval for the population proportion is 0.312 and 0.831. 
So we would say that we are 95% sure that between 31.2 and 83.1% of the businesses in this town have more than 15 employees. Do you see how that is not very useful because that confidence interval is so wide? We would need to increase our sample size in order to get that to narrow down some. The advantages of the small sample method is that it works and it actually works just as well as the other method. So if we're finding confidence interval for a mean, we use a Z interval if sigma is known. We use a T interval if sigma is unknown. And for a proportion, we use the one prop Z interval on your calculator. And this wraps up section 8.3.